even know if I'm gonna include that part, but okay. I think I will just be honest. Like, you know, we can, I mean, we're real on this channel. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts, not a sponsored video. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another adoption video and I have my mom here. Hi everyone. Thank you for having me back. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm gonna be honest with you, there's not a lot of adoption videos I can really think of to film. So if you haven't already, go ahead and comment in the comments and let me know what other types of adoption videos you wanna see. I know that this one girl on YouTube, like she has so many videos on adoption, but I don't know how she talks about adoption that much. Cause like, I don't really have a lot more to say. You're adopted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. I am sorry, <laughs> but um, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or stuff you want me to talk about, leave it in the comments because I need some ideas. I also wanted to thank you guys for just watching my videos that are unrelated to adoption because it means the world to me. I love just filming my life, filming my thoughts, filming the material items in my life. So for those of you who watch like all my videos, thank you so much. It means a lot to me. Today, my mom and I are going to talk about adoption, obviously, but first we're going to kind of dive into the mindset if you are having trouble with being adopted, this is one way you can look at it. There's many perspectives you can look at things. That could be anything in life. You could look at the glass half empty or you could look at the glass half full. Honestly, I typically look at the glass half full most of the times because <laughs> there's no point to be negative about something when in certain circumstances you can't change what happened. So you might as well just live life positive because life's too short to be sad and unhappy. Absolutely. Do you think that's partially because adoption can have for some people a negative connotation? Yeah. It's like, oh, your parents abandon you. Well, yeah, if you look at it like that, but if you look at it in a different way, then it doesn't have to be that sad. Or maybe from the parents viewpoint, maybe people look at, I don't know, people have all different kinds of ideas about adoption. Um, they may think, well, you know, adoption was like the last choice. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't bear children on your own, have them come from your body. Which it still typically is that. Right. You think yeah. people still think about that in that way that, you mm -hmm. know, well, we tried and tried and tried and we couldn't get pregnant. Mm -hmm. So we had to resort to adopting. Which sometimes that's the case and that's really sad, unfortunately. So do you think sometimes people think that is less? Yeah, I honestly do. And I know that's a negative way to look at it, but I mean, I don't look at it like that. I mean, I think that's true. So I'm agreeing that I think that perspective is true. And there are people who have adoption as the first your first choice. Yeah, because they don't want to carry a child in their body. Um, like one of um, Sherry's friend's daughter, she doesn't want to carry a child in right, her body. Right, I, I know people who want to make adoption their very mm -hmm. first choice. Yeah. Um, but some people don't. And I think sometimes people look at that too, is how will other people around them react? You know, different families can react different ways. So if you are in this negative headspace and you really are having trouble, if you want to think of this, then feel free to think of this. Sometimes I think of this and I haven't had a bad experience with adoption clearly, but it is something that you can think about. And this was told from one of my parents' friends. I don't know who told you this, but you always have a second chance at a parent-child relationship. Just like I have a parent relationship with Sherry. I have a parent relationship with Valerie. But when I bear my kids or adopt a kid, that's a second chance that you have to have a bond as a parent-child. So you don't necessarily only have one chance, you have another chance. Yeah, so th I think that quote was, you always have, you'll have a second chance at the parent-child relationship. And you can, you can be on the other end of that. So if you didn't have a great relationship with your mother, you have an opportunity to have a second chance at that mother-daughter relationship with you being the mother. Yeah. So that was kind of the, the situation, I think. Another thing I wanted to address, and then we're gonna kind of move into different experiences when you tell family members that you're adopting 
for your adopted. Maybe I should talk about that too. Um, <laughs> because it is kind of weird to other people, but um, there was this video that I saw and the word transracial adoptee was used. And I was like, I didn't even know these words existed. You know what I mean? Like again, adoption hasn't been that big of a thing in our family. At least I don't make it out to be, so I don't know really this. And when the girl said, when I heard that word, I was like, what, what does that even mean? So I had to look it up. And there's been other words that have been used that I'm just like, what in the world? So it was like tra transracial. Yeah. Is that the word? Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I never thought of it as being a transracial adoption. I know. We were adopting a little girl. To me, it didn't matter. I mean, I am from China, but I mean like, <laughs> I guess that goes back to, as I've stated in other videos, I don't really see myself as Chinese because I don't know a lot of the heritage, which isn't your fault what kind it is, but it's, <laughs> I don't know. I, I just don't associate really with being Chinese. The reason why when people ask, oftentimes ask where you're from, this happened just the other day. Somebody said, where are you from? Oh yeah, and then I had to just be like, <laughs> I don't said, even know. And you said, well, um, um, from Ohio or I I mean I was born in China in Florida. I moved here from Ohio I yeah. was in China before that so that's part of that whole thing I think of like we don't think of you I know I, no, I know I went to I'm China yeah. I was in China, was in China yeah. but um, it never occurred to me that I was doing I never even thought of that as any like transracial adoption or anything, but I, I did understand that would make you a smidgen different mm -hmm. than you know other kids in our neighborhood or whatever. Okay, so moving on to telling family members that you're adopting experience stories. Do you have any? Uh, well, we have some friends who adopted and they had totally different reactions from each side of the family. Mm -hmm. So one set of grandparents, they were totally excited. They couldn't wait to meet their new grandchild. It didn't matter if it was a boy or a girl or Caucasian or Chinese, it didn't matter. Um, they were delighted. They continued to be delighted throughout the years with their new granddaughter. And then the other side of the family was like, well, why are you adopting? Uh, you never know what you're going to get when you adopt. And of course, my first thought was, well, if they said that to you, you know, you really don't know what you're going to get when you get pregnant either. You know, you could have a child yeah. with issues. You have a child who developed issues later on. Mm -hmm. If you want a girl, you could get a boy. You want a boy, you could get a girl. And see, that's why going back to the Micah Stoffer thing, they didn't know what they were going to get, but you also don't know what you're going to get when you yeah. birth a child. Like that child could also have needs that you weren't planning on. Yeah, so that's true. I don't know why people say that sort of stuff. That's true. So people don't know how their families will react. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe they're unsure how people would feel about bringing a child into a large, a larger family unit, maybe not an immediate family, but a larger family unit of cousins and aunts and uncles on exactly how they would react to that. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about now my experience, like being, I don't know, telling people that that's my cousin, but they're <laughs> white. It's really weird because like, I typically don't see it, but then when other people bring it to my attention, I'm just like, oh, okay, whatever. I don't know, it's kind of awkward, but I'm just like, I don't know, it is what it is. Like, again, going back to what I said in the beginning, there's nothing you can do about it. Do you think that made it awkward being in Francie's wedding? Mm, because because she had two cousins, well, right. more cousins, uh, on her mom's side of the family. Right, right. She had two cousins in the wedding mm -hmm. and those two cousins didn't look anything alike nor did one of them look anything like the bride i don't know i just think it's easier to because i relate to i don't know like white girls okay so i kind of just i didn't really see it being a huge thing but also too I know that my cousin's boyfriend's sister was like, oh, I saw your friend on TikTok or something. And then my cousin goes, oh, that's my cousin, not oh, really yeah. my friend. So I was like, oh, that's funny. But I don't even think of that as like- oh, she thought you were a friend. Yeah, but like, I kind of <laughs> just like, I was like, why? That sounds weird. But then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm Chinese. So I guess you couldn't put that together because it does trick yeah. people. 
I think it's weird, but then I'm like, oh, it's not weird because I do look clearly different. Well, I think especially <laughs> kind of that wedding, like a lot of the people look the same. Yeah, that's true. I think, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the people, a lot of the girls were tall blondes. Yeah. And I think that set you apart, but being set apart can all, can be a positive. It doesn't have to be a negative. It's yeah. a very positive thing. And I mean, I do have blonde in my hair. So I yeah. think like if I, if I had like black, straight hair like the <laughs> hair that sherry likes yeah i like her hair black i don't like that because <laughs> i don't know i think it makes this sounds a terrible i don't know if i'm gonna include this but, but it makes me too chinese. chinese and i don't want to like i personally don't want to be seen as that like so because i don't want the questions do you speak chinese or like all those questions that I can't answer and then it just makes me look dumb. So like if I- So you don't want to be pigeonholed. Yeah, so that's a part of the reason why I like my hair being different and I like, you know, I don't know. My face gives it away obviously, <laughs> obviously. but I mean, I don't want to, I don't even know if I'm going to include that part, but okay. I think I will just be honest. Like, you know, we can, I mean, we're real on this channel. <laughs> if I had black hair and I, if, if I did, or if that makeup artist did like, my eyeliner like eyeliner on me like right. that like comes out to here or whatever like i don't think i would be i think i would have a more negative feeling about that situation about honestly different yeah i just had deja vu that's weird <laughs> i feel like we've had this conversation before so yeah i think i would have more of a negative feeling okay in that sense if she did that eyeliner, like I would well, just I think, not be okay with yeah, that. Yeah, I think I some people like have a preconceived notion of what <clears throat> makeup on someone who is Asian should look like, mm -hmm. and it should have like eyeliner like out here. Yeah, no. You know that makes you I look like do a eyeliner Japanese like geisha or something. Yeah, you know, no. and oh. I think you would. That's you would not want to be pigeonholed or stereotyped. Maybe. I think that's the right word. Yeah, Sorry you know about it, the lighting change, by the way. I use natural <laughs> yeah, light. On the clouds. Yeah, I know. Um, you didn't want to be stereotyped. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. Okay. That's the biggest because thing. Because that, is a, stereo that was a stereotypical Chinese way to do makeup, I guess, or mm -hmm. how people might perceive you ought to do makeup. So I think that's what I was trying to say okay. in a nicer, in an uneducated way. I didn't feel that different yeah. at the wedding, to be honest. And it, it wasn't really that, I, I mean, I don't think anybody saw that as any kind of big deal at all. Yeah, no. And everybody knew really... you were the cousin. Yeah, that's true. Because you were included in all the bridesmaid stuff, so mm -hmm. everybody, you know. But going back to like, telling someone like that's my cousin, it, it like, I'm not gonna lie, it is <laughs> awkward. Cause then I have to go into the spiel and you guys know the spiel already. I'm used to it, it's but also it's just annoying. Deal, just something <laughs> you have to deal with. Yeah, right? it's like I was adopted when I was one. I have two moms, they're gay, but I'm not. <laughs> I, I feel like I should write a song about it because. <laughs> There's another career. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but overall, um, being the different, a different one in a family that is all one other race, I think it could affect someone because one of my shaman sisters feels a little like awkward about that. And I can, I can relate to it, but luckily like my family's cool and stuff. And I think also too, what really helps is you and Valerie being gay, even though you guys are one race, like it makes me feel better that like I'm not the only I'm not the only different one, you know. That's true. Yeah, that's true. So I think, again, going back to them being gay, it has a positive impact on my experience because again, I don't know if I could say the same thing or feel the same way if I had straight white parents. That's fair. Do you think that's fair? I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's a fair analysis. Yeah. Okay, Sherry, final thoughts. <laughs> this is kind of like a rambly talkie video. The main takeaway of this video is like mindset and experience in your family being different and stuff like that and different experiences on telling people that you're adopted to family members and stuff, so. Um, again, what I have always said in all of the other adoption videos is just be honest. Yeah. And that's honesty from the parents. I, I think that's what I've talked about in the past has been honesty <laughs> from the parents about you're adopted, here's here's why, you know, you were abandoned in China, this is what happened, this is the government, and being honest about all of that. But Even I, with there's... Um, domestic adoption, you could tell your child like, hey, so your birth parents, you know, 
the birth mother was addicted to heroin. I don't know. If that's true, tell your kid that. You know what I'm saying? Like honesty, like you should just be honest with them, right? Yes, yes, I think and I mean you you always use my example because that's the only right, but there's, there's other example. circumstances. Right. Like what if a woman got pregnant and she had she a was, child and she was being abused at home and right. she couldn't and she didn't want to put the child through trauma and abuse, like or someone was really young. Yeah. Someone's really young, they didn't want to get an abortion. Um, but the other thing about mm. being honest though, I think mm. you want to open up that communication as a parent being honest with your child, so your child will also be honest with you. That's true. So if a, an adopted child was having issues, they would be able to communicate that to you and say, hey, you know, when we go to that family picnic, you know, cousin, cousin Johnny is always like picking on me and pulling my pigtails and you know, calling me names and, you know, it makes me feel really uncomfortable to do that. So, that didn't happen to me, by the way. No, that did not. I don't yeah. think that ever happened. No, thank God. No. You just said that one cousin will always come up and go, ah. But, he, but that was just because that's how he was. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> he did that to everybody, so it didn't matter. But they're really, but you know, if it's making, if there is something going on, you just want to make sure that communication is open so that your child also feels comfortable talking to you about how they feel about adoption. So really, we have not really had those kinds of conversations because I yeah. guess hopefully you felt that you could, and you have, you ask me questions about adoption when people would throw things up to you. That was covered in another, another video. video. But when those things would come up, you felt comfortable asking me about them. So I think that is also incumbent on the parent to keep that line of communication open, making the child feel comfortable talking about adoption so that if they are having any issues, they'll come to the parents and talk about it. And if you aren't comfortable talking to your parent, just find a trusted adult yeah. that really has your best interest at heart. So I think that is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Question of the day, what should it be, Sherry? Do you have any friends who are adopted or any relatives who are adopted? And how do you feel about that? How's your relationship with them? And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye. Oh,